So you've started using OBS to elevate your video calls. You've learned how to make a custom webcam shape, how to build different scenes, insert lower thirds, images, text, and much more. And by the way, if you still need to learn it, check out the link to my video tutorials in the description. So it's now time to take your video call presentations to the next level. One of the main issues of video calls is that they're pretty static. So we should do everything we can to make them more dynamic and more appealing for the audience. In this video, you learn how to use OBS scene transitions to add movement to your presentation, how to put emphasis on appearing or disappearing content to focus your audience attention on what really matters. Let's go! The first thing to do is to download the OBS Move Transition plugin. Just Google it and this is the one, Move Transition. Let's download it and install it. I've already prepared in OBS a few scenes that I will use to present on how to blur camera background in OBS. Starting with a simple camera scene that you can use in your video call until it's your time to present. When the floor is yours, you can then switch to the welcome scene to introduce the topic of the presentation. Since I've already made a YouTube video about that, I'm advertising it in the next scene. But I still want to mention what are the video key steps that are install stream effects plugin, then apply blur effect, and then resize and feather blur area. And to conclude, I have a thank you scene. This is just a simple presentation, so let's not focus too much on the content. I think it already looks pretty nice, for sure better than just sharing a PowerPoint on Zoom. However, each scene has a fade transition. The content appears and disappears smoothly, but it's a bit static. What we can do to make it more dynamic is to add custom transitions. If the plugin has installed correctly, now in the scene transitions menu, you'll see different types of transitions. The two default ones are cut and fade, but as you see, you can now add move, swipe, slide, stinger, fade to color, luma wipe, and shader transitions. In this tutorial, we'll work with the move transition. So let's add a move transition. I'll call it move one, as actually we are able to add multiple move transitions and apply them to the different scenes as we wish. We now have to decide what the move transition does. Items are divided into three categories. So if we take two different scenes, matched items are those that are present in the first and the second scene. We can even define what matched items are. For example, we can tell OBS that two items match if they contain the other source name, or use the other options that you see listed here. The second type are the appearing items. These are items that are not present in the first scene, but that are appearing in the second one. And the third type are disappearing items. These are present in the first scene, but not in the second one. We can now tell OBS how each of these item types can appear, disappear, or move within two scenes. You have the option to ease in and out and to zoom them. The most important thing to select is position. From this list, you can decide whether the items will appear from the center or away from center, top left, top center, and so on. Let's choose top right, for example, and let's preview the transition. Let's now decide how the items disappear. And I'll choose top left. And let's preview the transition again. Let's see how things change if we make items appearing from bottom left. I like this one better. And let's play the transition with my scenes. The transition looks good, however, it's a little bit fast for my taste. You can change the duration of a transition in the duration dialog box. It's currently set at 350 milliseconds. I'll increase it to 750 and let's see how it looks. Much better for me. Let's now play the whole sequence to see what we've done so far. You see new items appearing, others disappearing, and those that are common among scenes being eased in and out. Another parameter we can play with is the curve. If I apply it to the matched items, like the round camera shape that is present in the welcome and watch the video scenes, then the camera will take a curved trajectory when moving from one scene to the other. If I instead apply a curve to the appearing items and to the disappearing ones, I obtain a nice curve effect that I'd like to keep. So, so far we've looked at the position for appearing and disappearing items, at the fact that we can apply a zoom to them and at how matched items move from one scene to the other. And let's play again the whole sequence. We have appearing items zooming in with a curve, disappearing items zooming out with a curve, and matched items easing in and out. The transition that we are applying in the scene transitions panel, in my case move one, will be the standard transition that applies by default to each scene. But what if we want to apply a different transition to a specific scene, or to specific items within a scene? 
To do so, you have to apply a filter to the item that is called Move Transition Override. What I want to do now is to create a new move transition for the three text boxes where I'm listing the key steps. I want the transition to override the existing one. So what I want to do is to have the text boxes appearing from the left and disappearing again to the left, to the same point where they appeared from. So let's apply a move transition override filter to the item. Let's go to appearing items. And first of all, let's override the zoom function that we had created with the original move one transition. I will now tell OBS that it should not apply a zoom when this text box appears. So I'll select no. In the position dialog box, I'll select left. I will leave the transition as is. And I will also override the curve. If I wouldn't do it, then the text box would appear from left, but with a curve. By setting the override value to zero, I'm telling OBS that the text box should just come in from the left. And let's see how it looks. So the appearance is exactly what I wanted. Let's now work on the disappearing item. Again, when the item disappears, I don't want a zoom effect, so I'll set it to no. I want the text box to disappear to the same point where it appeared from. So in position, I'll select left. And also in this case, I'll select override curve and set the value to zero. Let's test it. It's perfect. Now to apply the same effect to the other text boxes, simply right click on the text box, then copy filters, and then paste filters to the other two text sources. And let's play the old sequence again. This plugin gives you so much freedom to customize your transition as you wish. It's just a matter of practice and picking the effects that suit you best. This was just a simple example, but I hope it has given you inspiration to create your personalized transitions and add movement to your presentations. If you like this video, please consider subscribing. If you now want to really learn how to blur your camera background in OBS, check out this video. See you in my next digital tip.